uh, Windows Home Server. Uh, you know, that server operating system oriented towards consumers that Microsoft used uh, a children's book and an anime girl to promote. What if there was a Windows 7 counterpart to it? Well, uh, that anime girl that was used to promote Windows Home Server is, um, generally speaking, the, the quote-unquote mascot of Windows 7, or the closest thing Windows 7 has to a mascot. And thus, allow me to present to you Windows Home Server 2011. Windows Home Server 2011 began development in, I don't know when, because there aren't a lot of publicly available Windows Home Server 2011 builds. From what I'm able to piece together on, from what is available on BetaWiki, Windows Home Server probably began development in late 2009, based off of Windows Server 2008. And development was probably shifted towards Windows Server 2008 R2, however, given that probably came out recently. And, well, this may seem like a normal, obscure Windows Server release, however, Microsoft was training a bit for them these days, as in they removed a very popular drive extension feature. Yeah, uh, people were not very happy about this. I looked at an article on the internet that was talking about this, and apparently it also said on that article that this uh, feature was supposed to be uh, improved, and apparently was in earlier builds. So it's a shame that they got rid of it. But well, hey, it's Microsoft, what do you expect? Windows Home Server 2011 was apparently getting close to completion in March of 2011, and, well, proof with this uh, was an article that I found online. This version of Windows was released on the 6th of April 2011, which also just ha happens to be the same day that they released Windows 3.1 back in 1992, which also just so happens to be the same day that, it, that a war began. <laughs> And, well, Windows Home Server 2011 was codenamed Val, or apparently I see the term Colorado in the build strings for some reason. And this version of Windows had system requirements of 2GB of RAM, a 1.4GHz processor, and a 160GB hard drive. Windows Home Server 2011 was discontinued in April of 2016, which was very short-lived. It was replaced by Essentials in Windows Server 2012. But I think we should- Oh, I didn't install it yet. Well, let's go install it then. Installation is not very noteworthy. We have a, an out-of-box experience of some sort, but it's not really noteworthy. So, I want to briefly cut in here and say that this next part was recorded in OBS Studio, which is something new that I have never done before, is a get video of an operating system directly from my computer. So, I'm not sure how well this is going to turn out, but let's dive into some of the features and things in this version of Windows. Let's begin with the server manager, which is something that is featured in Windows Server. In here, we have a summary page, as well as pages for roles, features, diagnostics, configuration, and storage. I don't have much to say for this, but we also have this dashboard thing for Windows Home Server. This has the home, users, systems, is what I'm gonna call it, data, and add-ins pages. I'm simplifying some of these a little bit, but you kind of can get the point from what you're seeing. By the way, this is what Winver looks like. It's Winver, although it just refers to the OS as 6.1 build 7601, like as if it's Windows 7. Next, we have Windows PowerShell. I'm not going to go into this too much, but it's a command line utility that generally replaces the command prompt. Another thing that we have is Windows Live ID, or options for it. I don't really have much to say here. However, I have some questions. First of all, why is Windows Media Player in this uh, version of Windows? And second of all, why do you have accessories found in normal versions of Windows in a server version of Windows? Why is there paint here? I don't know why, but it's here. We have an assortment of different system tools. For example, Resource Monitor, Storage Explorer, Windows Server Backup, Share and Storage Management, Certification Authority, Local Security Policy, Event Viewer, which is in a uh, main uh, client Windows, and will be uh, making another appearance uh, sometime near in the future, and the remote desktop services. We have uh, other um, things like your basic operating system necessities such as a text editor in the form of notepad, and we have different control panel items such as date and time, device manager, and personalization. I'm going to move on to Windows Explorer now, which I don't really have much to say, except you'll start to realize in the user folder that Windows Server isn't as optimized for server use as it could be, but I don't really have much to say about 
Windows Explorer. Last but not least, we can log off, or that's what it wants us to do. However, I'm going to shut this down because this is a server release and I don't really need to be using a server in a virtual machine. So that's generally going to summarize Windows Home Server 2011. It's not the worst. It's not the best. I, it could be a bit more optimized for server use, but I bet this would have been not too bad for a server operating system that you would need for like a home network attached storage or NAS back in like 2011 or 2012 or so. So I mean, it gets the job done, but otherwise I don't really have anything else to say. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>